Okay, that's uh, page 198. This is where we stopped, uh, exercise um, 8. Okay, so uh, did you did you open the book? Uh, Okay, so uh, in each is each number a perfect square or perfect cube or neither? Determine the square root of each perfect square and the cube root of each perfect cube. Okay, so we will do same as we did last time, right? So let's do 256. 256 um, so we start with prime factorization so it will be 2 and 128 2 and 64 unless you know the answer right away you can do it. If you don't know the answer right away, you can do factor tree. So it will be 2 and 32, 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, and 2 and 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 factors of 2. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and we need to, because we're trying to figure out if it's perfect square, Right, so we want to group them into three, uh, two groups with equal number of factors. So we can group them into two groups where we have four factors of two in each group. Right, and then in each bracket we have two times two times two times two will be 16. And in the second bracket it will be 16 as well. So this number is perfect square. Is it perfect cube? Let's try to see if it's perfect cube. Well, some numbers can be perfect cube and perfect square as well. So this is, so to, to figure out if this number is perfect cube, we need to divide our factors into three groups, equal groups. Can we do it? We can't, because we have eight factors and we can't divide 8 by 3, right? So we can divide 8 factors of 2 into 3 equal groups. Therefore, it's not perfect cube. All good? Yeah. Okay. So let's check next number. So next number, let's take what? 729. So 
729. And let's check. So we can divide it by 3. So it will be 2, 4, 3. So we can divide it by 3 again. So it will be 81. So 81 will be 3 and 27, 3 and 9, and 3 and 3. So we did our prime factorization. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors of 3. Right? So if we multiply them, we get 729. So now let's see if this number is perfect square. If it's perfect square, we, we, so again, can we divide six factors of three into two equal groups? Yes, we can. Right, and it will be three times three times three is 27. And in the second bracket, we get 27 as well. So now let's check if we can, if this number is perfect cube, right? To check if, if this number is perfect cube, we should be able to divide six factors of three into three equal groups. Can we do it? Yes, we can. It will be three groups of three times three. So it will be nine times nine and times nine. Right? So here we have 27 squared and here we have nine cube. Right? So as we can see, 729 is perfect square and perfect cube at the same time. All good? Yes? Questions? Uh, no. Is it clear how it's done? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, let's do one more to make sure. Uh, which one we can take? Let's take to 1,298. Okay, this is big number. So, so by 2, because it's even number, so it will be 6, 4, 9. Uh, is it right? Uh, 6, 2, 9. Then 649, uh, what can we divide into? Seven, 17, and 17, uh, 27 and 27, probably. Let's check. Twenty-seven times twenty-seven. No. Uh, Six forty-nine. Uh, what else we can do? Six Six forty nine. So is it prime number? Uh, Yeah, 
So we can divide it by 11. So we can divide it by 11. And uh, 59. Okay, so as we can see, our so 11 is prime number, 59 prim, uh, prime number. So it will be 11 times, 2 times 11 times 59. So this is our prime factorization. And we can see that 1,299 1, is neither perfect square or perfect cube because we can't do anything else here. Okay, question, question 9. A square has area of 18,225 square feet. What is the perimeter of the square? Okay, so we know perimeter is uh, area of the square is feet squared, right? So to figure out perimeter, we want to find the length of each side, right? Because it's square, all sides will be equal, right? And area will be a squared equals to 18,225 feet squared. So what we need to do is to find value of A. And because it's A squared, so we want to figure out if 18,225 is perfect squared. Okay, and again, we do prime factorization, so it will be uh, 3, 6, uh, 4, 5, right? So it's 15, 32, uh, 22, and 25. So by 5 again because it ends with 5, so it will be 7, 2, and 9. Right, and here, 729, we, we did it before, just few, uh, two exercises before, so it will be 27 and 27, so here we're going to have 3 and 9, or and 3 and 3. So same, we're going to have 3 uh, here on this branch, and 3 by 3. So now, what are our prime factors? 5, 5, 3, 3, 3, and 3, 3, and 3. So we have 6 factors of 3, and two factors of five. So now we want to group them into two equal groups. So this will be first group, three, 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 and five. And second group will be three, 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 and five. So if we multiply each bracket, so we get 27 times five, so it will be 5, 135 times 135, right? So value of A is length of the square is 135 feet. So perimeter, we add four sides, they're equal, so it will be four times 135, and what do we get? 270 to 70, 500 
and 40 feet. So this is our perimeter. All good? Questions? Yes, no? Uh, no, hold on, I'm just writing this down. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's try to do question 10. So those are similar questions. So and it just each question adds a little bit of complexity. So now we have a cube with surface area of a cube with surface area of 11,616. centimeters squared okay so we need to figure out edge length of the edge of this cube okay so surface area so how many faces cube has how many does does it have six right so first we need to divide we need to find the area of each face so we divide 11,616 by six this is what we need to do and what do we get so it will be 156 it will be 921 will be 3 and then 36 okay so each face has area of 1936 centimeters squared okay And because it's a cube, so it means that each face is a square, so area of the square is 1,936. So we want to uh, prove or show that 1,936 is a perfect square. And so what we're going to do, we're going to do what we already know what to do. We're going to do factor tree. Right, so it will be 2, then it will be 9, 6, 8, then again by 2, so it will be 4, 16, 8, 4, again by 2, so it will be 2, 42, by 2 it will be 1, 21, and 121 is 11 and 11. Okay, so we have our prime factors. So we have four factors of 2 and two factors of 11. Now we want them to group in because it's a, we want to prove that this is perfect square, so we need two equal groups, right? And here they are. So first group will be two times two times eleven, and second group will be two times two times 
11, so we have 2 times 2, 4 times 11 will be 44 times 44. So our edge length A is equal to 44. Okay, we're done here. All good? Yep. Okay, let's move forward. So now we move to next kind of topic, factoring binomials. So we have 8m minus 4m squared. Okay, so how to factor binomials? Right? To factor binomials, we need to look for common factors. So what will be common factors? between 8m and 4m squared. So 8 and 4, right? Common factor will be, so what is 8? It's 4 times 2 times m. And here in the second, second term, it will be 4 times m times m. Right? So you break down into factors. And what do we see? We have 4 in both terms and what else we have we have m in both terms right so those factors we can write and then in brackets we're gonna write what's left so first term 4m we factored it so just two left and in the second term, we factored 4m, 4m, so what's left? m left. So here we go, our binomial in factored form. Next exercise, uh, let's do d, 11d. So we have 6 a squared, b cubed, c minus 15, a squared, b squared, c squared. And again, right, so we're looking for common factors between 6 and 15. So I just, uh, for now I'm going to write in expanded form, right? so to visualize it, but down the road we should see it right away. So 15 is 3 times 5, and then A times A, times B times B, times C times C. Okay, now we're looking for common factors, so it will be 3 and 3. We can cross it. Then what we have? A and A. And here we have A and A. So we're going to write A times A out. Then what else we have? We have B and B. And here we have B and B. So we can... And what else we have? C and C here. 
so we can close. So what's left inside brackets? From the first term, we have 2b. This is what's left. And from the second term, what do we have? We have 5 and c. 5 times c. So now we're just going to write in normal form. So it will be 3 a squared, b squared, c, and then inside brackets we have 2b minus 5c. All good? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's do E. So it will be negative twenty four n squared n minus 6m n squared. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, I'm going to write everything in expanded form so we can easily visualize it. So we have negative 24, we can write it as negative 4 times 6. So if we have coefficients, so first we'll look for common factor in coefficients. Right, so tw negative 24, it's 4 and 6. And then we have m times m times n. And second term, we have 6 times m times n and times n. Okay. So we have minus in both terms, so we can factor minus. Then we can factor 6. Then we can... Right? We factored minus. So, so it becomes plus. Just then m, we have m in the first term and second term. So we cross m here and m here. And we have n in the first term and n in the second term. Okay. So now let's see what's left. In the first term we have 4 and m, so we're going to write 4m, and in the second term, what's left? Just n, so it will be plus n. So our final answer will be negative 6mn, and in the brackets we have 4m plus N. So we have fourteen B cube C squared minus twenty one A cube. B squared. Okay, 14 and 21, what will be common factor? So we know that 14 and 21 both divisible by 7. Uh, they have common factor, which is 7. 
right? So let's check letters. We have B cube here and B squared here. So when we have variable or in both terms, common factor will be variable with lowest exponent. Right? We have B cube and B squared. Right? So common factor will be B squared. So we'll write it down. So C squared, C. We don't have C in the second term, right? So we can't factor it, right? Because we only have it in one term. Same with A cubed, right? So A we have only in one term. So there is no common factor between these two terms. So they gonna stay. So now what's left? So we had 14, we factored seven, right? So what's left? Right, 14 is seven times two, right? So seven out, two left. We had B cubed, right? Exponent three, but we took B squared outside. We factored B squared, so we reduce our exponent by two. So it will be just B. And then C squared we couldn't factor, so it remains. Second term. So we had 21, we factored 7. So what's left? 21 divided by 7 is 3. A cubed, we couldn't factor, right? Because there is no A in the first term. So it stays. And we had B squared, and we factored B squared, right? So what's left? one, but we don't write one, right? So it's nothing. Okay, so here's our answer. So why do we learn this? So down the road, we will learn about quadratic equations, cubic equations, where we need to find intersections. So it will be in grade 11. So this kind of introduction into factoring polynomials. And quadratic equation is polynomial equation. Same with cubic equations. It's a polynomial equation. OK. So now we move, so this is binomials, right? So binomials because we have two terms, and that, that's why it's called binomial. Trinomials, as name suggests, have three terms. Right? But the uh, general name is polynomials, right? many, ter uh, many terms. Questions? Uh, no. So trinomials. So same idea, except we have three terms instead of two but we do the same, same logic, right? So we have three terms, and we check. So we have coefficients, right? 12, 6, 3. So what will be common factor among three numbers? 12, 6, and 3 it will be 3, and then we have G, but G we have only in two terms, right? So we can't we can't factor them, right? So what's left? So we had twelve, we factored three. So twelve divided by three will be four. Next, 
6g. 6 divided by 3 is 2. G we couldn't factor, so it stays. And then we have 3g squared. So 3 we factored. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And g squared left. We don't write coefficient of 1. So this is what we have. 3 times brackets 4 plus 2g minus g squared. Okay. Next, let's do b. Three c squared d minus ten c d minus two d. Okay, let's ch check coefficients three, ten, and two. Okay, so. There is no common factor, right? Because 10 and 2, like factors of 10, 2 and 5, factors of 2, 2 and 1, and factors of 3, 3 and 1, right? So common factor is 1, so we don't write 1. Okay, so we can't factor any number. Okay. Let's check uh, variables, letters. So we have c squared c, and we don't have c, right? So we can factor c. And let's check d. So we have d. In first term, d in second, and d in the last term, right? So we can factor d, because we have d in all three terms. So what's left? 3c squared, and d divided by d is 1. Then 10c and minus 2. All good? Uh, let's do E, so we have thirty x square y minus twenty x square y squared plus 10 x cube y squared. Okay, so let's check common factors. We check coefficients 30, 20, and 10. So common factor between coefficients will be 10. Wait. Then we have x squared, x squared, x cubed. So common factor, if we have variables, same variable with different exponents, common factor will be variable with lowest exponent. Why? Because what is x squared? It's x times x. What is x cubed? It's x times x times x. Right? And we can see that x squared exists in both terms. Right? So that's why common factor will be x squared. See? x squared and x squared we have here and here. So again, if we have variables, we have term with the same variable but different exponent, 
common factor will be variable with lowest exponent. So x squared. And then we have y, y squared, and y squared. So as I said, common factor will be variable with lowest exponent. So it will be y. So now, what's left? Right? So basically what you do, you divide by each term by common factor that you, we wrote down already. This is 10x squared y is common factor of each of this term. So 30 divided by 10 is 3. x squared divided by x squared, 1. Right? And y divided by y is 1. Okay? So, and 1 we don't write because any number times 1 is the same number. Next, minus 20 divided by 10 is 2. x squared divided by x squared is 1. And y squared divided by y will be y. Why? Because, again, we're trying to remember power rules. When we divide same variable with different exp when we divide same variable, what do we do with exponents? We subtract the exponents. So 2 minus 1 will be y to the power of 1 or just y. So exponent rules was in grade uh, 9. Okay. So second term will be 2y and then last term 10 divided by 10 is 1 x cubed divided by x squared, we subtract exponents, so it will be x, x to the power of 1 or just x, and y squared minus, uh, y squared divided by y will be just y. So here are our answer. 10x squared y times, in brackets, 3 minus 2y plus xy. Good? Uh, can we get one more? Mm -hmm. yeah, there are, uh, in the book there are plenty of exercises, so you always... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, after the class you, you can always uh, go to yeah. this chapter. So it, I think it's 3.4, 3.3, chapter 3.3, and uh, practice more. Uh, okay, D. Uh, d, so we have y to the power of 4 minus 12y squared plus 24y. Okay. So coefficients, we have first term, we have coefficient of 1, second we have coefficient of 12, and third one we have coefficient of 24, right? So it means we don't have common factor among coefficients. I mean, uh, not that we don't have, common factor will be uh, 1, right? And we don't write 1 because any number times 1 is the same number. Remember that? So common factor is 1, so not, uh, we don't write anything. So let's check variables. So we have y to the fourth in the first one first term second term y squared and last term is y and we already know that common factor between among variables with different exponent same variable with different exponents will be ver uh, variable with lowest exponent and lowest exponent here is one here y to the power of one so we can factor it. And that's it, right? So this will be the only common factor. Okay, and now what's left? 
So we had y to the 4, we divide by y, so we subtract exponents, 4 minus 1 will be y cubed. Next term will be 12, y squared divided by y, subtract exponent 2 minus 1, so it will be y to the power of 1, or just y. And last one will be 24y, we divide by y, will be just 24. Okay, so here's our answer. Okay? Yeah. And uh, how can you check that you did right? You need to do distribution, opposite that we just did, right? Distributive uh, law. Distributive law tells us that if we have expression a times bracket b plus or minus c, and number of factors inside the brackets can be any number, right? So I just took two, but it could be three, four, five, it could be unlimited number of terms inside the brackets. So, and this distributive law tells us that I can distribute my A to each term inside the brackets. Basically, I can, because we have multiplication, I can multiply A by each term inside the brackets. Right? So, and this equation, right, so it's a, a, a equation, so it means left side equals to right side, right? And it works both ways. So what we did up to now, we factored, you see, common factor A here, right? So we took it outside. So basically we moved from right side of this identity to left side. This is what we did, right? So to check that we did right, we're going to do opposite. We're going to distribute. Right? So let's check the last exercise we did. So our distributive property tells us that I can multiply y by each term. It's called foiling. Have you heard this word? Foiling? Yeah. I don't think so, no. You will. In, when, you, when you start your semester in school, you'll, you will hear this word, foiling. Basically, you multiply right, this coefficient outside, uh, by each term inside the brackets. Okay, let's check. So what do we get? y times y cubed. Right? So we multiply, again, we should remember exponent rules. When we multiply two variables or two numbers with the same base, right, with different exponent, we add exponents. So it will be y to the power of 1 plus 3. And it will be y to the power of 4. So y times y cubed will be y to the 4. Then we have minus y times 12y will be 12 to the power of uh, 12 times y squared. And then we have 24 times y will be just 24y. So we've got our original equations, equation, expression, it's not equation, expression, so we did everything right. Did you write it down? Oh, yeah, I'm still mm -hmm. Okay. okay, and let's do one more.
So uh, 13, so we have 8x squared minus 12x. Okay, 8 and 12, what will be common factor? 4. And we have x squared and x, so common factor will be variable with lowest exponent, so it will be x. And we factor everything we could. So and now we need to write what's left in brackets, inside the brackets. So 8x squared divided by 4x, right? So this is how you evaluate what's left in the brackets. So you divide your original term by common factor, what we factored. And what do we get? 8 over 4 is 2. x squared over x will be just x. Right? Because when we divide two variables, two same variables with different exponent, we subtract exponents, so 2 minus 1. Okay, second term, 12x divided by 4x. 12 over 4 is 3, and x over x is 1. Right? So this is what's left. Okay, 4x minus 2x, uh, 4x times 2x minus 3. All good?